let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Be holy as I am holy. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15. Second lesson, John chapter 5 verse 19. Golden text, John chapter 6 verse 46. Quote, brethren, that is the theme of our revelation this morning. Can you now see what our Lord Jesus Christ employed to overcome the whole world? It is said, He who comes from the earth think of things earthly. What he sees and what he hears from people on earth. But he who comes from heaven is the greatest and he speaks of what he hears from heaven. From what he sees with his naked eyes does he speak. But very many people do not believe in the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ knows fervently that the words are from the Father. The only argument is that from the foundation of the world till today, our Lord Jesus Christ has been the only person who sees the Father because he is with the Father. He knows the Father and speaks directly about the Father. You will then learn that he does not look on any man about all his actions. He does not look on the world. He pays no attention to what the world says. All his actions are direct from the Almighty God. That is why people do not believe in him, because what he sees are hidden from them. That is why at a particular instance when he was calling on the Father, Philip told him, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. This will explain to you that even though these people were following him day and night, yet did not see the Father. But he saw the Father because he was in the Father and the Father in him. The difference between him and other creation of God right from Adam is that he is a different entity. He is in the Father and the Father in him. He sees the Father face to face. You will thus realize that his teachings right from the Sermon on the Mount are based on God. We are taught directly about the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. He does not teach us about the angel. He does not teach about human beings. All his teachings are about the Father's actions and what he hears directly from the Father. He would not have been capable of doing this work if he had not seen the Father, nor been with the Father, nor heard what the Father spoke. You will also realize that those words spoken by some of us, unless I see with my naked eyes, I will not believe, are very significant. How can you speak about what you do not see and about what you do not hear? When people begin to talk about God, they simply do that because of their idea that God is like a tree. Others suggest that he is like a man. This is what has brought confusion into the whole world. Up till today, people are still traveling to the sun and the moon 
also going to the depth of the sea in search for God in order to see him face to face but up till today they have not succeeded in their venture but why do you not believe in our Lord Jesus Christ who sees him face to face who is in him and who also hears him he said these words do not come from me but if you practice them you will know whether they come from me or from God he teaches about humility because he has been this virtue of humility in God because he has seen this virtue this virtue of humility in God and he himself is humble he teaches us about love because God loves all of his creations human beings trees and fishes alike he teaches us about the truth because he has seen that element of truth in the father knowing that the father is the truth and his words are true he has therefore taught the whole world the truth that is why it is said a blind man cannot lead another blind man that is why also he says i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me how will you go to the father you will accomplish this true teaching if you practice his teachings if you put his words into practice you will see the father he did not only come to die to make the dead to rise but he as god had that bounding duty of revealing god to the whole world the greatest thanks we owe to him is that he does reveal the Father unto us or as our Creator. <coughs> His coming has done great works in the world. The mouth cannot even express. The thanks we offer is not commensurable with His coming. For God to come down on earth and reveal himself to us, I do not think that if the inhabitants of the world had realized that all the words spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ were spoken by God and all his actions were taken by God, they would have doubted his teachings. He teaches you the note and sulfa notation. He gives you the key to all songs. Someone can prepare a palatable food for you, but fails to tell you the mentioned, he fails to tell you the method and the ingredients he uses in preparing the food. Though he will present the food to you, this does not indicate that he has given you any food. But this is a person who after preparing the food for us will call us and tell us the different ingredients and the method he has used in preparing the food. Learn of me for I am meek and lonely in heart. This means that he wants us to wear true resemblance of the father so that we may be one with him he has taught us that god is mercy his humility his patience his righteousness his truth he has narrated all the attributes of god unto us does the world know that he was teaching us about the father the son and the holy spirit do you know this brethren have you heard what he says in our first lesson? He says, But as 
He which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. We have been shown that God is holy, the Holy Father, holy name of God, the Holy Spirit. That is why he has enjoined us to be holy in all manner of conversation, in all our thoughts, words, and deeds, in our behavior, right from the head to the toes, and everything about us. That is why he has advised us not to look unto any man, because his teachings are not focused on human beings, but that he should look unto God. Do not look unto anyone. These are exactly the words he spoke. Truly, I say unto you, whoever believes in me, the works that I will do, he will do, and greater works than these will he do, because I go unto my Father. One of the greatest work he has done is that he has redeemed us unto the Father. The whole world today is, is the children of God. He has written an epistle to us that we should resemble the Father. He has also written to the whole world that the Father is holy and it is therefore expedient that we must be holy in all manners of conversation so that we may exactly be like him. I do not think that the wisdom of the world has got to that height of truth. The only wisdom that the world has is that our Lord Jesus Christ was, has redeemed us. This is not all. He has redeemed us and shown us how the Father is, so that we may be like him. That is why many people are asking the question, what good thing has our Lord Jesus Christ done for us? Right now, people are falling sick and dying. War is waging. Hatred is lingering. What is the usefulness of our Lord Jesus Christ? They ask this question because they have rejected that chapter which tells us to resemble the Father, that we should be as the Father is. This is the only assignment left undone, which the Holy Spirit has come to accomplish. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ swore, By my life all knees shall bend, and all tongues shall sing my praises. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, and they will not be like the first covenant which I made with your forefathers, because I said, because I had abandoned them in the desert. In this new covenant, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more, for I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness. A child must, of necessity, resemble the Father. There is no miracle that the whole world should not resemble their Father. Whether we like it or not, it is imperative that a child must resemble the father for you to say now, I am not a child of God. It is rather too late for you to say, let me run or escape is also rather late. As long as your father is holy, it is incumbent upon all of us to be holy in all manners of our conversation. Do not look unto human beings, do not look unto trees, do not look unto an angel, but only look unto the Father as He is holy, as He is pure, as He is humble, 
as he is loving, as he is truthful, we have the right and cause to rejoice for those through whom God passed to write the Bible and the words therein. The words written down in the Bible constitute the greatest thing because if these words were not written down, we would have been in a sympathetic situation. You can find God in his words. You will see the reason why all the words of God imparted daily to you must be recorded, written, circulated, and also kept for posterity. It is for you to read these words, because once you read them, you have seen the Father. If all of us could study diligently these words, it means that we have seen God and the Holy Spirit. You cannot find God at any other place except in these words. If you accept these words and practice them, then you have seen God face to face. The word of God has told us that there is no righteous man. No, not one. That is why it is said that you should not have faith in any man who, who breathes through the nose. You should rather have faith in God and believe in the words of God because these words are God himself. It does not serve any useful purpose for you to say, If I were at the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, I would have done this or that. You are presently at the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once you hear the words of God and practice them, then you have seen him face to face because I have taken all the words I heard from the Father and revealed them to you. I have also revealed unto you all what I saw from the Father. Therefore, abide in these words and practice these words even also as I have abided in my Father's words. Brotherhood is the word of God. Brethren, doubt no more this glory of God. That is why we continue <clears throat> from the first day of January to the last day of December every year to preach these words to you. The glory you have seen at this end of time is that brotherhood is the word of God. It practices the word of God. This is the glory revealed to you. It is said, all leaders who do not abide by the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ have neither God nor the Christ. But all leaders who abide by the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ have both the Father and the Son. Stop asking questions and reading different books, but only go and practice the word of God because our Lord Jesus Christ has revealed God to the whole world. And so, brethren, I do not want to take you further. Let our first lesson be read. First lesson, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Brethren, have you heard that? Just as he is holy, you must also be holy in all manners of your conduct. Why do you say that you are not our Lord Jesus Christ? He has always been like the Father. He has always revealed the Father to us. By humbling himself, he shows that the Father is humble. He does not come, he does not become angry, as the Father is also not angry. He does not Eight, since the Father does not eat, he possesses all the attributes of God. From this, what can you call him? Who will argue that he is not God? What do you say the Son who resembles the Father is? He is a replica of the Father. If you go to somebody's house and then find a person dressed in white, and being very tidy and you go 
to the same and you go and do the same thing what then is the difference between the two of you if you see a person who does not tell lies who is not angry who does not fornicate who does not drink and you simply emulate him where lies the difference between the two of you doctrines of the christ based on the sermon on the mount that is why you have been told to focus your attention on our lord jesus christ concentrate your attention on the teaching of our lord jesus christ as recorded in st matthew's gospel from chapter 5 follow exactly the teachings of our lord jesus christ his sermon on the mount as recorded in St. Matthew Gospel chapter 5 is very efficacious and particular notes should be taken of it. Here he reveals God openly to the whole world. Whoever abides by the teaching of that chapter has no more problem. It is a truism that he does not speak of himself. It is also true that he does not speak of things worldly, but speaks of God and invariably speaks of the Father only. His teachings are not based on means of acquiring money or having a wife or means of committing murder, but teaches us to be like God. If you practice what is recorded in St. Matthew's Gospel chapter 5, and St. Luke's Gospel chapter 6, then you will be like the Father and will be holy as the Father is holy. How will we be holy as He is holy? Unless you are able to practice the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7, but also in other synoptic gospels of St. Mark's, St. Luke's and St. John. As soon as you practice them, then no dot of sin will be found in you. It is for this reason that we have come. Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end the things of the, the the things of God are accomplished in stages and at the appointed time when it is not yet the appointed time nothing is done this is the era of revealing the glory of God and the glory of the children of God many people are testifying that any person who goes to steal is not being sent by God. Even people who do not believe in God, who do not know Him, often describe certain, certain sickness as not from God. Right now, if you go to fornicate, people will question, is that a man of God? Does a man of God fornicate? If after preaching to people, you begin to quarrel then a question will be asked i think you are a preacher should a preacher quarrel it is because of this revelation of god by our lord jesus christ that as soon as you read the bible you become vested with the true knowledge of god come to know really what he does all the problems that beset us in as a result of not heeding the instruction of god and our refusal to be as he is the wages of sin is death remember the two thieves on the cross one of them said to our lord jesus christ you claim to be the Son of God. Save thyself and us also. 
But the other rebuked him, saying, Does, does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we received the reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. In the same manner it is known today throughout the whole world that the punishment which befalls us is as a result of not being holy as he is holy. You will realize why our Lord Jesus Christ said, Be holy even as I am holy. If we are not holy, how then can we have peace? For it is said, all those who commit sins are servants of sin. A servant does not live in the house forever, but the son has to live in the house of the father forever. If therefore, me, it therefore means that if the father is holy, our Lord Jesus Christ is holy. If the Holy Spirit is holy, then we must be holy as he is holy in all manners of our conduct. It is said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. If you find any person who is imprisoned as a result of theft, you will only hear someone say, I do not sympathize with such a person. He is the architect of his misfortune. Let him be imprisoned. If you find any person who is intimate with another person's wife and is beaten mercilessly, there will be no pity <coughs> for such a person. People will rather say, why was he not beheaded? Even if a sick person comes to you for prayers and after telling him to confess his sins, he starts to say, I have committed murder. You will not be patient and willing to offer the prayers again. But God does not behave that way. Moses acts as cause. Moses has caused the blind man to see. But after receiving his sight, the man killed two persons. When he was about to kill the third person, people went and reported to Moses that the blind man he had made to see is almost killing everybody. Moses became exasperated and then went to the blind man. The man was happy at seeing Moses, but Moses told him, come and kneel down, let me give thanks to the Father. The man knelt down and Moses prayed, prayed to God to, to cause the man to be blind again. He again was blind. This is the nature of man, but God does not behave in this way. That is why, if you are asked, which school you belong? Do not belong to the school of Moses. Come out from such elementary school. Attend the school of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is dealing with the Almighty God face to face. Because of seeing all these virtues of God, that God is not angry, is not hateful, is not punitive, does not commit sin, does not abuse, that is why he has taught us the same lessons. Love your enemies. He has also demonstrated to people. When he was about to be arrested, Peter took out his sword and struck off the ear of the servant of the high priest. But our Lord Jesus Christ rebuked him. Peter, put up again thy sword into, thy, into its place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. He again restored the air. That is why he says, Be holy as I am holy. Brethren, God is never angry, nor does he quarrel. God does not pronounce woe unto any man. He has no problems whatever. 
He is only holy. If only we could be as holy as He is holy, it would have been very good. When people saw the trouble caused by the angel, they concluded that God was annoyed with the children of Israel. The trouble was all caused by an angel. Because of this, people now advise others not to go to the church because God kills. God has no money. All those are false. God does not kill. Be holy as he is holy. Nothing sinful resides with him. He has no part in sin. Behave exactly as our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you heard about the word he taught his disciples? It is what I am going to tell you today. Our Lord Jesus Christ advised his disciples that the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All, therefore, whatsoever they did you observe, that observe and do, but do not do their works, for they say, and do not. This is what is obtaining in the world. You will see a person standing in the pulpit to preach the word of God, that people should love one another and be humble to all to tell the truth. But as soon as he comes down from the pulpit, he gives you a slap on the face. That is the work of the flesh. Is he putting into practice that which he is preaching? Do not look unto the flesh.